<laughs> <Stink bug. laughs> ah. All right, ready? I'm ready. I'm always ready. All right, guys, welcome back to the BTR YouTube channel. Uh, something a little different today. I wanted to make an announcement. We're going to start something called BTR Builds. And what that's going to cover, uh, maybe tech videos, uh, something we're doing over at Brian's shop with his personal cars, or maybe something that one of the employees is doing to theirs. You know, So usually we want to just say, hey, we're having fun. That's what we're doing. We want to share with you guys. But also uh, we'll, we'll incorporate some, some tech uh, knowledge in there, maybe uh, some pointers, maybe something that, you know, just new product that we're tinkering with. Maybe some, some secrets will be shared in there. You know, So keep a watch, keep a lookout uh, on that kind of stuff. The other thing is, uh, today's video is gonna be something that we've kind of wanted to do for a while. Uh, while we were doing that project with Red Hat Scotty, I don't know if you guys remember that video, uh, but we basically swapped the cam in his truck over the weekend. And again, that's something that we had a lot of fun with. Um, it's something you can do as well. And again, we made a couple tech videos uh, with some pointers along the way. So I wanna share those with you. This next video will be on some pointers on the springs and what to look out for there. A lot of simple things that can be overlooked. Some things may be common sense, but we just wanna cover everything and, and kind of give you guys a little bit better understanding. And also, we just wanna have fun, right? So pay attention to BTR builds and onto the footage. All right, so we're gonna throw the springs on the heads. Uh, a couple things to look for when you're doing this. You know, you wanna look for valve tip wear or anything. We do have a valve tip saber equivalent kit to just about any of our 660, 685, or even our 650 spring kits. So uh, we do have them for LS and Gen 5 and the Hemi. Um, Hemi is a little bit different setup, but and we'll go over that in a different video. But for now, I just wanna to touch on a few things. Obviously, look over the head, make sure everything's good, clean it up as well as you can. Check the valve tips, and then when you're opening your nice new shiny BTR spring kit, if you open it carefully, sometimes this paper right here will be stuck to the roof. Usually it isn't, but sometimes if you pull it off, it'll, you won't notice it. So something that's pretty crucial, a um, little simple piece of paper, just says that, um, you know, do not use the factory spring, or sorry, factory valve seal rather. And then our locator and seal two piece uh, it says correct here, this is what you should use, but to note, the seal doesn't actually go all the way down on the valve guide and touch the locator. There is, call it, you know, eighth inch gap or so there. Depends on if you have any shims or anything under the locator, but something I wanted to definitely mention in this video, something we throw in there, and it gets overlooked sometimes, so. Um, but I will also show you why the stock seal is a no-no for our 660 spring kit. So, just took, took out the, uh, just a single spring here, and we will show you that yes, our, the outer uh, spring will sit down on the stock seal and be happy and, and not cause any issue, right? You can see it's there, it's got plenty of room, moves around, so on. The inner is smaller, and it catches on this step, which you could probably maybe see here. Um, if you can get an angle there, there's, it's not going down that step. If you can see, it's uh, you know over a quarter inch from actually sitting on the where it should sit, where the outer spring sits there, the locator. So, um, if you s install our springs with a stock seal, you're going to bind this inner spring. And what we see happen a lot of times, obviously, it could break the spring, uh, but we see sometimes uh, it'll actually break the rocker, the rocker bolt. I mean, it it gets very angry very quickly. So, do not use our dual valve spring kits with any other valve seal set up other than the ones we send. Very critical. And again, to note, the locator uh, does not sit, um, or the valve seal rather, sorry, does not sit all the way down the locator uh, there. There is about an eighth inch gap. So we'll finish unboxing these springs. We do put a, just a bubble wrap deal just to keep everything nice and happy in shipment. These are the valve seals that we send. They're more of an umbrella style, I would call them. Uh, here's our retainers. These are the steel. And then we have our locators and then locks. So what I'll say, show you is the locator here. You normally sit down, you know, over the valve guide there. And then your seal 
and again we'll have another picture of this here in a sec when I get a few installed so but your seal is going to sit on that and it's going to be you know give or take about that high and your seal is not bottoming on this locator it's bottoming on the top of the guide just again so everybody knows we do offer a tool to help ease with these uh, valve seals uh, installation and as well as um, a valve spring height mic uh, that we'll go over here in a sec just to show you guys that you know you always want to double check uh, that install height when you're setting up the springs or even on a GM head or aftermarket head uh, valves can be sunk differently uh, you know there could potentially be an issue that you'll find uh, but not only that uh, you want to set your springs up to the camshaft uh, lift specifications and, and again we can do some math on that real simple uh, math problem you work out just to make sure that you're not going to cold bind your spring and so on after you figure out what the install height looks like with your locator and retainer installed. So. Alright guys, so back with the head, um, got our BTR uh, bow spring in install or bow spring height mic. Um, so really nice when you're installing these to, you want to check every valve. Um, again, shouldn't be very many variances, um, but um, I'll kind of give you a quick rundown of how to use this tool. So. First thing you do, grab your locator, put it over your uh, valve you want to check. And you want to put your uh, inst uh, height mic there, retainer down, and you want the retainer to make sure it's pretty crucial. You don't have to use ours, but you want to make sure that retainer is uh, flush with the top of the height mic. It can't be up or sunk down into it. You know, some of these uh, don't work well with our retainers, so we, that's why we launched ours. But you don't have to use ours, it's just easier if you do so then you just kind of start unscrewing again locator down tool retainer flush with the top of the height mic and then again you start unscrewing and until you get it to a good stopping point and then i give it just a little snug kind of give her a wiggle make sure she's sitting good and flush yeah there we go and well let's uh bring it around so y'all can read it there we go so we'll stop about right there. So again, good and flush, wiggle, tight, there you go. So what's cool about our packaging and the label we use, as you can see here, um, you know, your install height or um, inch 780. So this is, you know, your, your coal bond numbers, um, open, close, so on. Install height, inch 780 is what you want on our 660 springs. So if you come Look here, again, we've basically set this tool up to, to where the spring is gonna be installed at. And it is uh, one inch, 780 on the dot, um, which is pretty nice. Doesn't always happen that way. Again, we'll check every one. Plus or minus five is okay. If you get one that's, um, you know, uh, 10 to 15, give or take, we do offer shims um, to shim it up. Uh, if you get in a situation or it's the other way around, we can offer um, plus or minus retainers. I'm sorry, uh, valve locks as well. Typically on a GM head, you're not gonna see any of that. Most you'll need is a, is a shim. Uh, but on an aftermarket head, aftermarket valve, so on, you know, you can get into uh, needing, you know, uh, plus or minus 50 thou and a shim, or, you know, in a situation where that, where you're gonna take in 50, 60, 70, 100 thou up to get them set correctly where you want. So, um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is, the set them up install height, it's good to go with generally any um, 660 valve lift camshaft. Um, if you really want to get it fine tuned and you know maximize the ability of the spring, you can set it up tighter. Uh, and what that, there's an equation for it. Um, so coal bind on your spring, you take your coal bind, inch, seven, inch 070 on this one, you add your, um, Camshaft lift, uh, which is 619, I believe, on the intake, 607 or so on the exhaust, on the hot rod cam. Um, you can set it up per intake exhaust lift, or you can just you know, pick your highest one, say 619 is what we'll go with. So then you add your inch 070, your 619, and then you add a uh, 60 thou cushion to make sure that you know nothing's crazy or your map's not off a little bit or you over ram it or whatever that may be for your cool bind. So you just throw 60 thou in there, 50 to 60 thou for, for a safety. And so you add that up and what it should come out to, um, it, like I said, inch 070, um, 619, and then the 60 thou. Um, 
We'll have to cut that out. We don't need to do that. <laughs> cut. So pull your phone out, pull a pen and paper out, whatever your style is. So again, Colbine Incho 70, your 60 thou safety. And we just went with 619, which is the highest amount of lift on this camshaft. So that comes out to, if you can see it there, inch 749, so inch 750. And that's uh, ideal specifically for this camshaft we're installing in this truck. It's not necessarily a requirement. Uh, I would say it's technically the proper way, but if you set these up with this spring um, at an inch 780, you're gold. You know, again, plus or minus five. Uh, if you have one that varies, you need to look at a shim or pop it possibly um, different retainer, maybe a valve lock. You know, you want to get it the spring set up where it wants to be happy, right? And the uh, if you did go, um, you know, in seven eighty, throw a thirty thousand shim under this, uh, you'll get a little bit more seat pressure, a little more open, right? You're you're setting that spring up a little tighter, uh, a little more valve control potentially, maybe with some boost or a little more RPM out of it. You know, before you have to move up to the 685 or the 650 spring kit. Um, so, again, just depending on what you want to do, um, how tight you want it, how precise you want it, uh, inch 780 is okay. But if you want to do the math, set up correctly, uh, get you some shims. I think they're three bucks for the set of 16. Um, and uh, yeah, just what we want to see is you checking. That's, that's the main thing. On you. <laughs> and, <laughs> all right, so we checked our install height. Um, we got our locator here. Wanted to kind of showcase it's a very, very simple tool. Uh, not necessarily required. They are, there are ways to put these uh, valve seals on with a socket and so on. And, you know, I'm sure there's other ones to be on, had on the market, but it's a really nice setup. Take your valve seal, definitely put your locator on, make sure that's on, don't, don't goof up and do that first. Simply, uh, if you look here, this tool is kind of cut out for our seal and, you know, the LS valve height and so on. So pop it down on there. Just give her a good push. Then you'll screw in this little eye deal. Get you whatever your favorite screwdriver is. I kind of have, I'm rather fond of this one here. A little miracle on there. And you're going to take, put it in your eyelet. Make sure Brian Tiller Racing is facing out. And then push down and it'll stop. Give it a good little push there. And that is how easy it is to install the valve seal with the BTR valve seal installer tool. Now, again, we'll circle back here. If you look, and I don't know if you can see it here, that locator is definitely not touching that seal. There is, it is okay to have a gap there. As long as your valve seal's down, and your locator is in its proper location and the shoulder is facing up for the spring to sit and be happy around, you're good. So that is, it's just that simple. All right, so there you have it. Seal's pretty important to make sure you have one correctly. Obviously, you wanna make sure it stays put and, and you wanna know where it's supposed to sit, right? That doesn't go all the way down. We covered it in the video, so that's pretty easy. Next step would be to throw your spring on, your retainer, compress it with your spring tool, and throw your locks in. Uh, we like the Bluegrass Performance tool around here. Uh, pretty nice piece. Um, there's tons out there. Pick your poison. Uh, so once you compress it, uh, you can see here that these locks, um, this is an example of several of our kits, uh, but you know you can see that that locator lock and valve tip there are, are happy and nothing's crooked or out of round or uh, higher than the other. It sits where it should. Um, this example of our SK001 kit here, and so actually one of our more common kits. So just check it out there, a good visual representation of what it should look like once it's installed. Uh, so that wraps pretty much the information for this video. But I do want to touch on other things. Uh, you know, we want to have fun with this BTR build series. And so if there's something that, you know, tech, technology that you need, questions you have, and uh, just a plain video idea, or just something you want to see that, you know, about day to day around here, please let us know. Drop it in the comments. Also, like, follow, subscribe, and we'll keep trying to bring this uh, type of videos to you.